Welcome to the Brevis Consulting Living and Learning Podcast. Now to your host, Shivraj Prashad. Shivraj Prashad. I am so happy that you have chosen to join me today. As founder of Brevis, I work with a whole host of exciting folks and together have the privilege of serving companies, leaders and institutions across sectors and geographies in order to enhance their learning culture. Right now, we face the greatest medical crisis in our lifetime. There's a whole list of things that one can do in order to cope in such a situation and build one's mental resilience or emotional strength. Today, I speak to my friend and certified psychologist, Parul Parashar, and focus squarely on coping mechanisms from a mental health perspective. Parul, first up, I know these are trying times and also very busy times for you. Thanks for taking out the time to speak with me. It's a pleasure, Shivraj. Before we dive into the issues I want to speak to you about, just wanted our listeners to understand your experience and credentials. Now, you've gone from working in the corporate world and human resources to delving deeper into the human psyche by helping with counseling in the social sector. Tell us a bit more. I had done my education in psychology. I had done a bachelor's and a master's in India and then another master's abroad. And basically, I was always interested in psychology, but back then, the field here was very nascent, not very organized. Decided to get into human resources, which is what I did for about 11 years. I was finding myself without a purpose in the corporate sector. I was doing well in terms of external factors like the money and the title and travel, but I wasn't intrinsically satisfied. So I decided to go back to psychology and I started volunteering with this organization known as Sanjeevni Society for Mental Health, which is actually one of India's oldest NGOs in mental health. We provide free and confidential counseling to anyone who needs help, as well as rehabilitation services for people living with serious mental illness. There was a need for a director, and because I had a corporate background, I was made the director of this organization. And it is quite quite the need here in the market in India. Now, of course, the last time we spoke, it was on the back of my blog when I requested you to sort of speak to us, where I relied on the great self-development leader, Dale Carnegie, on tips for mental toughness. But, Paro, we're clearly yeah. living in very unprecedented times, a crisis of almost existential proportions. Would that be a correct characterization? We've not seen anything like this before. And there are a lot of worries people have and all of them are valid worries. Worry about one's own health, worry about the health of loved ones, worry about your job, about your career, the state of your finances, how long your finances will hold up in this kind of a situation. Also, this longing for one's own, you know, old life, physical contacts, because right now we are in isolation with our immediate family. So the hobbies that we were able to pursue earlier, the friendships that we had, the extended family we were in touch with who met a lot of our emotional needs, that has been severely curtailed. And uh, while it's a wonderful opportunity to be with one's immediate family, but if there was some sort of conflict in those relationships that was there and that we had distractions earlier of work, of our other friendships, of hobbies, those distractions can no longer hold. So we actually have to look at that conflict. Also, our relationship with ourselves. Right. Uh, because of this whole world of life, we may not have invested in, or may not have had wanted to invest in a relationship with ourselves. But now again, we are by ourselves a lot with our thoughts, our feelings, which being in a lockdown with one's own family and the pressure that puts on those relationships is very valid. If you read reports from Wuhan, you know, the divorce rates in China really gone up after this lockdown got lifted. And it's not like conflict probably existed earlier, just probably made it far worse with the result that once this lockdown lifted, they felt that they couldn't live with each other. Right. No, and also Parul, from what I understand, you were actually working very hard to create your own resources to support people at a time like this. Now, when you speak to these people or when you interact with people now through your online resources, what has been uppermost or the most immediate issues that they have articulated to you as as really troubling them? I think the uncertainty about everything, uncertainty about uh, how long this will last, uncertainty about the impact it will have on their work, on their finances, on their relationships. 
so i think uncertainty is what people are grappling with the most and it doesn't help that we're being constantly barraged now online on our phones on television with information and questions and now there of course a plethora of articles and experts all telling one what to do it can be quite confusing and also add to the panic right so that's how i always say that now we need to be on a social media diet or a news diet because just the way you need to eat and not overeat to be healthy same way you need to kind of watch your social media consumption you need to stay abreast you need to know what's going on in the world but you can't get consumed by it and if you feel that you're getting overwhelmed that's a clear sign that you need to reduce your social media usage so if i were to ask you to sort of articulate the top 3 or 5 things you would tell these folks to adopt as coping mechanisms what do those 3 to 5 things be everything is our journey there's a whole list of things that one can do in order to cope in such a situation and build one's mental resilience or emotional strength so i'm going to list more than maybe 3 to 5 things and then whatever works for whoever because definitely we need to consciously and with awareness come up with a strategy which is personal to each one of us i'll just try and bucket it into two buckets so one is to do with myself so for example self care the way in physical health you need good food regulated sleep exercise that goes for all of us for physical and emotional health in addition i would say sunlight we all put up some sunlight gives us a feeling of well being so that could be in your balcony it could be in your courtyard in your garden or just if you have a window with some sunlight try and get that secondly i would say that have a structure to your day have a routine which is roughly same times for getting up same time for sleeping meals hobbies etc because again that structure gives you a sense of purpose which is really needed in so much of uncertainty in terms of emotional health it's also important to kind of acknowledge your emotions we all have feelings and we are all taught that there are some feelings are positive and we need to embrace them like happiness joy excitement but then there are some feelings which we are taught are negative anger irritation sadness but the fact is that these are also very real feelings they are valid feelings and in times like this they are there in all of us we need to acknowledge them because if we don't acknowledge them they're going to come out in other ways for example if you're irritated and angry because you're spouse is not helping you with housework equally then if you don't acknowledge it to yourself it's going to come out in some other unhealthy ways if you will take all out, all that agitation out on your child who has nothing to do with it so acknowledge your feelings because those feelings will give you then solutions on how you have to act also be a rational friend to yourself just don't stay in those feelings and let those bog you down ask yourself am i seeing the worst possible scenario could i look at this situation differently how have i dealt with a challenging situation like this in the past be that rational friend to yourself will pose all these questions and then i think you can't undermine the attitude of gratitude find your own silver lining yes we all going through a really rough time yes our finances will be impacted but there must be something good in coming out of all this maybe it's more time for introspection maybe it's more time to work on the relationships in your life there's something in all our lives to be grateful for coming to that actually working on ourselves we clearly heading into a new normal but i am an optimist at heart right. so would it be fair to say that on the flip side this quarantine has offered many to really reflect and develop ourselves mentally there's no telling how great we can be when all of this ends absolutely and maybe it different way of life i think this is also a wonderful opportunity to find what is more meaningful for you in this new normal then if we are to go back to that old way of life what you can carry along with yourself paro from a mental health perspective i think some are saying and i wanted your reaction to this some are saying the irony of this pandemic is that it is putting the spotlight squarely on issues of mental health in a country like India where it is left quite unaddressed would you agree with that i do feel that yes we are all in very uncertain times but those of us who worked on our emotional health on our mental health we will be probably more in touch with ourselves and we will see some light and take care of ourselves in every way And finally Parul tell listeners how they could potentially reach out to you or your organization if they needed help. My organization is like I said it's one of the oldest in the country and our counseling mode was more face to face and provided that counseling over the phones. 
so we are currently working on how we adapt to these new times there are many many organizations that are providing mental health services and a lot of them are free of cost so i can share with you those resources shivraj paro parasha thank you ever so much for speaking to me on the brevis kut sating living and learning podcast thank you shivraj well everything's gonna be alright but i can see you on the other side The track you just heard, See You on the Other Side of Corona, is written by frontman of Friends of Linga, Sharif Rangnekar, who's also a friend and a great communication expert. I think there is an opportunity when we can all combine our forces and convert what appears to be a deep crisis into opportunity for shared learning. Next week, I speak to Sharif Ragnaker on what he believes could be the best way to use music and the arts to try and tide over this crisis. I hope this conversation helped you in any way. If you have any questions, inputs, ideas or anything else you'd like to say to me, shout out by writing in to me at shivraj@brevis.in or connect with me on LinkedIn. With your beautiful smile. 